It's not every day that you'll see two members of Congress from two different parties doing an interview together, but today is one of those days. Joining me now are Democratic Congressman Jim Hines of Connecticut and Republican Congresswoman Martha McSally of Arizona, two states that sadly are also familiar with high-profile shooting incidents. Uh, Congressman and Congresswoman, thank you for coming on together. And thank you for coming on together. We asked for this, and you guys easily wanted to do this, so thank you. Thanks, Absolutely. Uh, Congresswoman McSally, I, I know this is... Uh, the, the experience that uh, Arizona went through with Congresswoman Gabby Giffords. Um, uh, so this, this hits home for a lot of folks in, in Arizona as well. Your thoughts today? It does, uh, Chuck. My community knows all too well uh, what it's like to go through acts of violence like this against public officials and their staff uh, while they're engaging in listening to their constituents or in, you know, engaging in their work and other activities. And, uh, before we walked into our briefing, we walked by the Gabe Zimmerman room, which is named after the first congressional staffer killed in the line of duty. So we know all too well uh, what it's like to go through something like this. Uh, and now is an opportunity, just like Tucson did in, in 2011, uh, to show unity like we've not seen before. Yeah, Congressman Himes, I, I believe you were on the job all of nine days um, when Congresswoman Giffords uh, was shot when that, and, and, and we lost G Gabe Zimmerman. Um, that was your introduction to being a member of Congress. Your reaction today? Well, um, I, I was actually elected two years before that. You may be thinking of my colleague Elizabeth uh, Estee, who was there. elected. Yeah, no, but I'll, I'll tell you what, it didn't matter whether that was your first couple of days in Congress or, or who you were or where you were. Of course, the massacre of 26 uh, uh, young people and their teachers just, uh, I mean, it continues to resonate in Connecticut. Uh, and just the sheer horror of that act continues to resonate, and not just in Connecticut, but in this building. This, I, look, there's been a lot of calls for unity today, and you guys are appearing together today, for instance. But, Congressman Hines, I'm going to start with you. That spirit of unity was there for a short period of time. We had the, where uh, everybody didn't sit by, as a party for the State of the Union. They, they, everybody sat next to a member uh, from the other party. Uh, this is yet another attack on the institution where it should be Americans were attacked, not a Republican, not a Democrat. How do you keep that spirit of civility alive? Yeah, it's a great question, um, Chuck. And one of the more moving moments this morning when the Congress came together for what was billed as a security briefing, but really turned into a conversation about unity and about tone, most of us walked out of that room realizing that, you know, if unity means we're always going to agree on things, we're not going to achieve that, and we probably shouldn't achieve that. It's good that Martha has a different way of looking at things than I do, uh, and the debate that ensues is good. But I think it was a great reminder for us all that the tone really matters. And the word tone was used a lot this morning. And, and sometimes we feel like we're sort of victims of the tone. We have town hall meetings and people shout. And this morning was a real reminder that we're actually, as leaders, we are responsible for trying to set as civil and as constructive a tone as, as, as we can. Glad to hear you say that. I think it's on all of us that are in, in, in the, in, involved in public discourse. Uh, Congressman McSally, uh, I know that you got a security, it was billed as a security briefing, and it's my understanding many members of Congress expressed some concern that if you're not in leadership and you're not in Washington at the Capitol, mm -hmm. uh, you don't have a lot of security. How concerned are you? <laughs> We don't. And about a month ago, a man was arrested for multiple uh, messages and uh, indicted on three counts of death threats against me. And we get asked this question all the time. Obviously, we don't need to take unnecessary risk, but I think the best thing that we can do right now is continue to do our job, continue to be accessible, to continue to lead and show that we're willing to listen and engage and be out and about in our community. Uh, we cannot be hiding in a bunker. Uh, I, I flew in combat, and just because I knew there were threats out there didn't mean I stopped doing my mission. My mission now is to represent and we can lead on that front again not by taking unnecessary risks but we can't mm -hmm. live in fear the best thing that we can do is go to the congressional baseball game tomorrow night uh, right. and show that we are not going to be stopped and then we're going to continue in our business of having sincerely held beliefs and dialogues and debates but we can disagree without being disagreeable i again i served in the military there's real enemies out there uh, <laughs> that are trying to kill us in our way of life they are not our neighbors they are not our our colleagues so we have to come and unify in a way that this i think crisis is equals an opportunity for us Congresswoman, I want to follow up on something you said. You said this is a wake-up call. A wake-up call for what? Is it on tone and civility? 
I, I really do think so. Um, I think uh, the temperature is very hot right now, and uh, like I've not seen in my lifetime, we have people filled with, you know, sincerely held beliefs that are now turning into attacks and demonizing and vitriol and hatred. And again, I think we can disagree and have some, you know, sincere debates on policy issues and listen to each other. And that's throughout the country here, but also in our communities. Uh, and you know, I, I know neighbors who are mad at each other and family members over politics. Knock it off, right? There are things that unite us are far greater than the things that divide us and uh, you know like the like the, the frog in the boiling water you know if you keep turning this up one degree at a time uh, th threats of violence and acts of violence are, are not too far a leap and so uh, I think it's on all of us really to look into our hearts and to see what can we do in order to tone it down continue to have those rigorous debates uh, but not be uh, feeding into any sort of environment that's toxic and can incite or encourage right. people who are maybe not stable to be taking uh, acts of violence well, sadly, social media, I think, has conditioned us to accept hyperbole as fact too often in, in some of this rhetoric. Congressman Hines, let me ask you about some specifics here. We heard a few ideas being thrown out as far as to at least um, improve some security. The idea of your district offices always being trying to locate them in federal buildings or in courthouses, in federal courthouses, you know, if that's possible, because there's an added layer of security. Is that something that formally you'd like to see the House take up? You know, I, I think there were a bunch of constructive suggestions made this morning by people on both sides of the aisle, and that was one of them. Uh, and the actual comment made was, how, how, how can it possibly be true that uh, given the budgets that we are given uh, right. annually to run our offices, that we can't afford to go into a federal building where there is that added security? That's obviously pretty crazy on the face of it. But, you know, there's also moments where, uh, where we come together in big groups, uh, where oftentimes um, the Capitol Police will be there to help, but we probably ought to be more conscious of that. I mean, we saw that this morning. It it was just a coincidence that Steve Scalise, a leader who has a personal security detail, happened to be on that team. Had he not been on that team and had there not been an unbelievably uh, yeah. well-trained and brave detail there, we would have had a much worse tragedy. So there's a lot to think about in this regard. All right, Congresswoman Martha McSally, Congressman Jim Himes, Democrat from Connecticut, Republican from Arizona. Let's do this. Let's see you in a month come on together <laughs> while we talk some policy issue. All right, how about Let's that? Let's do it. All right, okay, thanks, Jeff. thank you guys. Appreciate it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.